It's too late. Like, I mean, I, I guess they can give him another chance, but he should turn it down. I don't think that uh, they deserve to have him in this league, and they don't get to now put themselves, try to absolve themselves of what they <coughs> what they were uh, complicit in allowing to happen. So I think that Cap had a several-year period where he was trying to get back in the league, and he couldn't find a way uh, outside of that um, kind of sham of a tryout that they tried to use, as, as um, Max said, as a Trojan horse to get him to sign away some of his legal rights. Outside of that, he hasn't gotten a real legitimate shot. So anybody who comes out now and says, I wanted to sign Cap, or, or if the league comes out now and says, we are going to try to do our best to get Cap in, like, it's too late. You did what you did. Where was, where was all this um, energy back then? So, uh, and, and I also think that he, he shouldn't give them that. He should not give them that. If they come and offer him a contract, I think he should reject it because they don't get to now put themselves on the right side of this issue. I see two uh, arguments that supporting your point. Uh, you just mentioned essentially the co-opting of the protest and the counterculture, which is now mainstream culture, by the NFL, who resisted it for so long and, and denied Kaepernick his fair chance, his right to make a living, because they operate a de facto monopoly. The NFL has a greater responsibility to make sure that Kaepernick has a fair chance at a job than just some other kind of business. Because if you're the best in the world or among the best in the world at what you do, and what you do is football, to make a living, you got to play in the NFL in North America. I mean, that's how it works. So, so that's one, um, the co-opting. And uh, I, I think there's some truth to that. He serves good purpose. Maybe you could argue more powerful as a symbol of martyrdom, you know, as a martyr for the cause than he does if the NFL co-opts him. And um, but this leads to the other point that in the co-opting of Kaepernick, they have somehow taken away the protest. In fact, what it seems to me is that the protest has gone mainstream. If you can bring uh, an organization like the NFL into the fold and have them, you know, on your side, so to speak, uh, the, the formerly kind of mainstream point of view that the NFL held now in the periphery, and they're sort of forced as a reflection of what's going on in the broader culture to come to you, then, power, then, then Kaepernick is a powerful symbol as someone who's at least given a chance to make the league. Then, then you've kind of done your work and, and you, got a, you got a kind of inside man there. And, and in fact, now it's publicized it's for all the world to see. Remember when it was so important for the NFL owners to show the players and to show essentially the protest who's boss, that the status quo remains, that the powers that be still be? Well, in that case, the NFL didn't want his face in the league, right? Because that'll show you. That sends a message. But if they're now saying, come on, come to the league, we need you here, rather than co-opt it, Dominique, I think it's a powerful symbol that what used to be on the, in the margins and peripheral and powerless is now powerful as a result, as a reflection of the will of the people, which you were talking about earlier in the show. So while I see your argument, ultimately, I think Kaepernick getting back into the NFL or at least be, being given a real chance to compete for a job is important. I think the NFL should offer it. I think they have, they have the um, responsibility to offer it. And I would hope he would take them up and try to make it. Yeah, look, I don't think there's any question that all along, ever since this entire thing started, as far as Colin protesting and choosing the vehicle to protest as he did, I think all along he should have been given an opportunity right from the get-go. And we know that it was unjust and it was very, you know, it wasn't the proper way for owners to conduct themselves as far as going ahead and getting together and keeping him out of the league. I mean, I think we all know that. And I think we know that was BS right from the get-go. And the more you think about it, especially now in hindsight, the more it kind of pisses you off that that, that actually happened. That actually happened today in you know 2016. That actually happened. They kept the young man from playing because he chose to protest about something that now all of a sudden it is chic for some people to get behind and go, oh, you know what? Yeah, you know, hey, look at the things that I'm trying to do. Look at the things that I'm trying to do as far as, you know, um, putting out there a display of, of getting behind 
protesting against social injustices. So that being said, moving forward, you know, should he play? Should he be given a chance now? Of course he should. If he's someone who can help a football team, you know, be better in the quarterback room and be better on the football field, of course he should. It should have happened all along. Here's the thing that you have a bit of a problem with, though, and I think Dominic alluded to this. It just seems very opportunistic now. You would question the authenticity of it now, considering the fact that over the past couple of years, no one thought he was good enough or no one thought he was worthy of playing in the NFL. So now if teams jump up and, and then say, hey, well, look, we'll, we'll sign him. We'll put him on our roster. It's just, again, and I keep coming back to this word. It seems to lack authenticity. And I know that says, you know, there's going to be people who say, well, what do you want people to do now? What do you expect them to do? You're going to question everything they do? Well, you're damn right you're going to question everything you do. You know why? Because this is a problem that just didn't creep up four years ago. This is a problem that's been 400 years in the making. And really, yeah. it's, it's one of those issues where, you know, it's, it's kind of, it, this isn't new. It may be new to some people because now it is being thrown in their face as to, look, you're going to have to address this one way or another now. But this isn't something new. So I could, I could totally understand if Colin at this point, and I would never in any way, shape, or form speak for him, but I could, I could totally understand if he said, you know what, now my impact would be even greater by not coming back to the NFL and continuing down the path that I am because now the movement is strong. Now every, I've got everyone's attention, and now everyone is kind of trying to promote change and actually come up with actionable plans. And I don't know if necessarily going back to the NFL really supports that, although he should have been there all along and been given an organic chance to make a living. It just seems inauthentic now if a team were to jump up no, and do it, although no he does deserve Dominique, it. Dominique, before you jump in, Dominique, I just wanted to say this, which is so unfortunate. It's not like it's been four years and he wants to get back into a, a TV job. It's in the National Football League. It's yeah. so unfair. He lost four years of play. We know the average career is only yeah. three years. So he might be vindicated somewhat now, but you can never make up for that. Yeah, I think he's already been vindicated, quick, and the NFL is using – go ahead, Max. I'm sorry, I was just going to say, Muhammad Ali lost the four years of his prime, to ages 26 to 30, and he came back and he was never the same, but he still – you know, that was part of the story. It's part of what made him the greatest of yeah. all time is he overcame obstacles that were bigger because he was no longer at his best. And mm -hmm. I would love to see Kaepernick give it a shot, too. 